You're watching Chewing the Cud with Mike Benning Rowe and Lee Robertson. Listen, if I'm not being diddled by a ghost, why is my hiney so cold? Mm. Hello. Welcome to Chewing the Cud. What? <laughs> but if I am, why is my why is my why is my hiney so cold? So cold. So cold. What have you got anyway today? I have a story about a summertime phenomenon. 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 Before we gate crash a very important birthday party. We even have a game that you can play along with too. But on screen now, you can see our contact details. It's at the Cut TV on your social media. And if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Look for Chewing the Cud. If you put on the shelf there. The ghost. Ghost. Ghost sex. <laughs> Oh, tiny! <laughs> Come on, let's get on with it! And you can see the names of people who have reached out on social media go along the bottom of the screen. But now we have Lee and the showbiz news. James Bond. Doom, bidi, bum, 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 bum. We, we, we are... Are you ever a fan of the James no, Bond movies? It. Do you? I absolutely hate James Bond. Not even like the campy 70s ones? No. Oh. Don't perhaps, like them. Perhaps this will change your mind then. Okay. Um, Luke Evans. Nice. The actor. Mm -hmm. um, he has addressed whether or not he could be the first out gay James Bond. Okay. Mm. So Daniel Craig, who is the, is the outgoing James Bond... He's currently James Bond won't be for much longer. No, so he's he's about to start in um, upcoming upcoming drama Queer. Um, he bowed out of the role um, in 2021, okay. and there hasn't been one since. Mm. Pandemic got in the way, didn't it? Mm? Pandemic got in the way. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah. Um, so, but even before Daniel Craig was quitting, mm -hmm. rumours had been started about who was going to replace Daniel Craig mm -hmm. as James Bond. Idris Elba got fingered. Idris Elba was at one yeah. point tipped. Um, and then, I don't know who this person is, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Okay. Do you know him? I do know Aaron Taylor Johnson. From The Fall Guy. Mm -hmm. And Guardians of the Galaxy's Will Poulter. Poulter. Okay. Poulter. 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 Um, and Rocketman's Taron Egerton. I know who that is. Um, yeah, he's had a back over him. <laughs> but apparently... <Not> <laughs> Did I ever find him attractive? Not as Elton John. A little bit. <laughs> Took you back to your youth. So, but the number of queer people mm -hmm. potentially in the running is quite slim. Um, but Luke, he Luke Evans has kind of said, I'm up for it. Cool. Now, just to remind ourselves on what James Bond's we've had. Mm -hmm. There's a picture of them all shirtless here. Um, Sean Connery. Sean Connery. Had a nice body. Um, I don't know who he was. He was the one that... George Lazenby. I don't know. Um, Roger Moore. Mm -hmm. Sucking his gut into for the Sucking world. Sucking his gut in like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Um, Timothy Dalton. Mm -hmm. Pierce Brosnan. Yep. Craig. Daniel Craig. Craig. <laughs> Daniel Craig. Daniel yeah. Craig. Um, the hottest one. Do you think Daniel Craig was the yeah. hottest one? I'm a little bit Sean Connery. I mean, he was a good looking guy back in the day. Mm. But that's many, 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 many he's just years dust now, isn't he? Mostly He's no dust. longer with us. Anyway. Is he not? No, he died a, quite a while ago. Did he really? He died, my penny. I've died. Shaken, not stirred. That's dark. Um, so. <laughs> Luke Evans was saying, I was like, wow, I could have, I could have done it in a really bad Welsh accent. That Please don't. So Luke Evans has said, I was like, wow, this is like, cra this is like crazy um, that I'm on this list. Um, so it's, it, it's, I took stock that day and thought people could see me as that role, even being a gay man, mm -hmm. um, which I thought was great. And it means that we are progressing. So that's him with his, with his current partner. Current partner. Current, well, he, you know. <laughs> Shady. No, sometimes, that you know. It's existing, existing it's partner. It's existing partner. Um, yeah. And the um, ghost one. So he said, um, if it was offered, he wouldn't turn it down. Mm -hmm. um, I've still got some years left in me to do stunts and shoot a gun and wear a tuxedo. I do look quite good in a tuxedo. Everybody looks good in a tuxedo. 
I don't. Everyone looks good in a tuxedo compared to not in a tuxedo. Have you seen Penguin out of um, Batman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's me in a tuxedo. Um, <laughs> I stand by my statement. So he said, he's previously expressed an interest in he's ready to play the character. Okay. But there's no confirmation one other way or the other. So I, I would quite like him to actually be a gay James Bond. A gay James Bond? Yeah. Not an actor who is gay playing James Bond as a I straight want, man. I want James Bond to be a, Romy, a raving homosexual. I want him to be fisting people left, right and centre. But because they, they blatantly say that this person that is James Bond is not actually James it's, Bond. No, it's, 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 it's a name. A, it's a name for the agent. Hmm. So he could be a gay James Bond. He could be a black woman, which was touted last year, was kind yeah. of saying no, this could be the next James Bond. It's not going to be because James Bond... It's a misogynist. Fans will be like, nye, 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 nye. Um, and then the franchise will die and we will all be happy. Oh. Um, let's move on to something perhaps a little bit more palatable. Okay. Um, will Young. He He's currently on a tour uh -huh. and released a new album, but he's been talking about kind of his life as a pop star. Okay. And he's he was on a podcast and he was talking about how he um, went to the palace uh -huh. to have... Um, afternoon tea with the Queen, um, with a number of other celebrities, oh, no, and um, the butlers uh -huh. and footmen kept coming up to him and congratulating him and oh. saying, "What did you think I was going to say?" I was getting more salacious than you were. Um, so he was like saying, he recalled going for lunch with the Queen and noting lots of the butlers working at Buckingham Palace were gay men. I think all of the men working at Buckingham Palace are gay men. Um, it was quite a big thing then. He didn't often get a male pop star at the beginning of his career coming out. Um, um, this has been back in the day oh, of pop idol. Darius is dead. Um, obviously, Darius is no longer with us. That's Gareth Gates. Zoe Burkett. Oh. Don't know who that lady was. I think she didn't she represent Eurovision once, Jessica Jessica Garlic. Oh. oh. I'm not that... doing the show, bitch. You do the show. Mm -hmm. Um Wanted to. Wanted to. Wanted to. Did you? I don't remember those two. In a threesome? Or one at a time. One at a time. Because Gareth Gates take a while to get going, wouldn't he? So he said they were coming up to him in secret. And uh, one of them came up to him and went <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> under a tablecloth. <laughs> well. they, and so they kept coming up to him during the, the lunch and kind of saying, fantastic, we were really pleased. So obviously they weren't supposed to do that. Uh -huh. um, and then and then I went to the loo and another one was like, thank you so much. I mean, I could cry. It was amazing. Why, why, was, why was he in the loo? Why was, I mean, Will Smith obviously gone for a wee or, or, a, or a poo. I would do that if I was ever invited to the, the, the palace of a like dinner with you'd the go king, and lay I would some cable definitely in the have a poo in the toilets. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's a nice story. So yeah, he's he's this autumn is on a forty nine date tour for his ninth album, Light It Up. Um, starts on so the album was is already released. The tour starts third of September. It starts in South End. Then Reading, York, Leicestershire, Brighton, Glasgow, and all that kind of shizzle. It's going to be an intimate evening of music, stories, and laughter. And we'll see him head to many areas that he's never had the chance to perform in before. Mm. Now, last final story, Jamie uh -huh. Lee Curtis. Um, actor. Uh -huh. um, or, as I like to call her, Jamie Lee Curtis. In like a... In like a... Came with a voice. Yeah. yeah. Um, she has revealed that she, when she's on a movie set, mm -hmm. she asks all the crew members to wear name badges. Um, okay. Because she's kind of like said that when you're a film actor Person. on on set, um, you don't always get to know who all the people are. And she thinks it's kind of like a courtesy to the crew. To almost be able... like a Jamie Lee courtesy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So she yeah, she makes everybody wear a name tag, including herself. So, yeah, she's saying that there's something really uneven about the position on a set of a movie that all the cast, all the crew know the actors' names. Mm -hmm. the actors don't. So she said, she said, on the movie set, if we all are working together, we will be wearing name tags. So that when we come in, I will be able to say, good morning, 
and a name um, without a second thought because I've learned their names. Yeah, you're reading their names. Yeah, but, but I don't think they wear them forever until they've learned the names and then take them off. Um, I'd be changing my name every day on my name tag. You could do. Um, so they've recently announced, she's, Jamie Lee has recently announced that she's returning with Lindsay Lohan for Freakier Friday, oh, which great. is the sequel to their 2003 hit Freaky Friday. Well, hits used very liberally there. Uh, anyway, I thought uh -huh. that we should do the name tag thing. So you can remember what my name is. Hmm. Just pop that on. Just peel the sticker off. Peel it off. It's not true. Peel it off and put it but on. it's not true. Just put it on. No, not after reading what yours says. Your name is not Dominic. That's what I'd like to be known as from now on. Mr. Powerbottom. That's the end of this week's showbiz news. Well, thanks for that, Lee. This isn't true. I'm not a power button. Just a bit gappy. Stick around, because after this, it's Mike and the Buzz. You're watching Chewing the Cud with Lee and Mike. And now we go into the deeper parts of the internet, as it's Mike and the Buzz. If you're on death row, I'll rephrase it, when you're on death row, what's your last meal going to be? Ooh, I don't know. Stuffed crust pizza. Probably not. What? Your last meal will probably be whatever they're serving in the cafeteria. I thought, you, I thought if you were on death row, your last meal, you could choose what it was, would be. You used to be able to, um, but they've stopped it cut. because... No, worse. This is all thanks to one particular prisoner, a one Lawrence Russell Brewer. Oh, what did he do? Well, for his last meal... Right, there he is. OK. Um, basically, his last meal was so awful, they've had to say no one can do this ever again. What, his meal was so awful? So awful. Well, what did he ask for? He asked for a bowl of fried okra with ketchup. OK. OK. Two chicken steaks with gravy and onions. Right. Uh, cheese omelette with beef and jalapenos and capsicums. Mm -hmm. A triple meat bacon cheeseburger. Did he, like, go out doing massive meat farts? <laughs> Three fajitas are not finished. Not finished? Not finished. Three fajitas, half a loaf of white bread, a 15-inch meat lover's pizza, a pint of ice cream, peanut butter fudge and three root beers. Was he having a, was he having a banquet? Was he having a little buffet? He, for he then everybody? left it and didn't eat it. He left it and didn't eat it? Just wanted to be an inconvenience. Oh, OK. Right. And so they went, you know what, this is a punishment. Your last meal is just a, a privilege. Did they make him eat it? No. They just said, right, fine, you starve. Everybody else have whatever's in the canteen that day. Oh. Your last meal could spoiled be liver it and for onions. all the other death row. He, he spoiled it for everybody. Spoiled it for all the other deviants and murderers. He was a murderer. Was he not a murderer? He was a murderer. He was a murderer. He did murder. He was not a nice man. Not a nice person. No. Um, um, I've always said that if I was ever going to be, like, electric chaired... Electric chair. Electric chair. I would just eat a lot of popcorn kernels. Because, <laughs> like... <laughs> Coming out your nose. Yeah, um, it's like, who wants popcorn? Like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think they probably have rules about that kind of stuff. They, they've just said, said that because people keep requesting these like, lavish meals and either not eating all of it, right, or taking so long to eat it that they delay the execution. Like two weeks. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're going, I've got the meat shits, leave me alone. Right. They just turn I mean, quick. some people would say, if you've done something evil enough to be put to death, you shouldn't be having a nice meal. People that should say you shouldn't be killing people just because. No, well, been... yeah, there is yeah, that. So, you know. That's my preferred. Mm. Yeah. Um, but moving on from that story. Okay. Yeah, because. That was a bit of a downer, wasn't it? That it was a bit of a downer. Yeah. Um, it's a story about a conspiracy theory. Conspiracy theory around the Catholic Church. <laughs> See what I did there? Built a conspiracy theory. Put it around the Catholic um, that's a gentleman called Steve Bassett, who said that the Catholic Church knows about aliens and has evidence. <gasps> okay, because you've heard about the Vatican archives. No, no. So the Vatican archives is a basically. A, um, Vatican keep everything that they get in their possession and they oh. store it. 
Okay, so things like um, forbidden pamphlets and stuff like that. Then. Forbidden pamphlets. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, that's some serious stuff. What kind of pamphlets? So things like Galileo's pamphlets. How to are... make a lovely sandwich. Yes. That kind of stuff. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you say in those archives, there's evidence of, of aliens, right? <gasps> and that the Catholic Church is in league with them so much that they've even baptised some aliens. <gasps> They walk amongst us. They do, or used to. Why are they gone now? Well, we don't know, because they've got no evidence, because they're oh. in the archives. Wouldn't, wouldn't, Eli Ebabai, wouldn't aliens uh -huh. be contradictive of the Catholic faith? Because the Catholic faith believes that Jesus, God, made the world. Which one? God or Jesus? Because they're two technically different, but yet the same people. His dad. God. God. Made the world seven made days. the world. Yeah. But he didn't make aliens, though, did he? So, there's a little loophole behind that. Oh, there always is, isn't There's always there? a loophole with these, these books, which is that he created the world in seven days. This is what he created, right? Oh. One of those days, he created the heavens and earth. Mm -hmm. doesn't say that he didn't then go off and, day eight, right, I'm going to build this. Day nine, I'm going to do this. Oh. He just stops at day seven. Just stopped. So, yeah, there's that loophole. Would you shag an alien? Depends. Oh. Fit, big dick. If the alien was fit with a big dick. Uh huh. Yeah, probably. Okay. And they'd been regularly tested on prep. Humanoid. You don't. We're an alien. It's not, not immoral if it's an alien. Okay. I think the Pope might be an alian. Okay. Just based on. Put that out there. Based on what? I just don't like the cut of his jib. Didn't know he was circumcised. Hmm. Anyway. And if, like Lee, you believe that the Pope's an alien, why not share your theories with us? We are at the Crude TV on social media. And that brings us, I'm going to say nicely, to our story of the week. Now, a little bit warm at the minute. Mm. Because it's summer. It is. Okay. And summer has many, many an issue for an your health. Issue. Many an issue. Yeah. So hay fever suffers. Oh. Um, snotty, snotty. Teary, teary. Heat sneezy, rash. Sneezy. Heat rash. Mm. Okay. And for the, those people that are blessed with the penis... Also gets summer penis. Summer penis. Yeah. Now, what this is, it's basically um, your penis goes on ho beach holidays, um, plays a bit of volleyball, splashes about in the sea. <laughs> you were with me for a little while there, and then went, oh, no, he's being a dickhead. <laughs> you, you thought you were recounting the plot of um, Top Gun. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. So, <laughs> I just had this image of uh, penises placed... <laughs> Penises, <laughs> Penises in the sea, bobbing around. <laughs> <laughs> like little jellyfish. I can love on. Um, so this is the phenomenon. 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 Do do be do do. Right? <laughs> when it gets warm, your penis will actually grow. Will it? It will. Not erect, just swell. In girth. In girth. <laughs> unless, you're, unless you're a grower. You know? <laughs> um, so it's just, as you get warm, the blood vessels open up. And of course, that's how your penis works. It, it engorges when it gets excited and blood vessels open. So to cool down, it will grow. Oh. Which I thought was quite an, an ingenious way of cooling down. If if um, penile tissue uh -huh. expands with heat, does is that the same for um, vagina tissue? They do also expand. So they have like a, a, a summer vag. Mm -hmm. They have a meaty flap. <laughs> That's it. You're a bit gippy, that. <laughs> so in the summer months, if it's warm, everything's everyone's walking around with massive swollen Genitals. genitalia. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sexy. It is, isn't it? You Not really. Just wrote about it. Red bloated beef curds. <laughs> I just said about motorboating it, and the word beef curtains was the problem you had there. Ooh. Yeah, um, but they said don't. The doctors have said don't worry about it. When the cooler weather hits, it will shrink back down to normal size. <laughs> oh, what a sad time! Autumn months are sad. Yeah, that's why lots of people wear the grey sweatpants at autumn because they start to see it shrinking because it's no longer. And they think, warm. oh, I've got to get people Quick, to have a look at this. Have a look it, at it before it gets small again. Before it's acorn size. Exactly, yeah, a walnut. Well, I've learnt something today. Have you really? No. No. <laughs> You've been inspecting people's crotches for years. Oh, summer, autumn, winter and spring, I'm always looking at a groin. 
And that's all from the buzz this week. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. It's... Thank you, Mike. You clearly aren't suffering from summer penis. Um, stick around. Suffering coming... is a very strong word. What? Suffering is a very strong word. Suffering. Stick around. It's coming it's up. Have you finished? It's me. Is it you? It's me. I didn't see it. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. I'm sad to say that he isn't suffering from summer penis. Why are you sad that my... Anyway, um, stick around, because coming up next we have a game to play in our Game of the Week. Welcome back! And yes, you're watching Chewing the Cud. And now we're going to go and play a little game, and this is for the man who doesn't have a summer cock. <laughs> it's Mike. Big all year round. I'm Ginger, aren't I? Game of the Week. Are you ready for the game, Mike? And what are we playing today? We're playing Myth or No Myth. Myth or No Myth. Myth or No Myth, yeah. So I've got the word Myth and Truth written out in front of me. Pick a letter. You what? I've got the words Myth and Truth written out in front of me. Pick a letter. A letter. From the alphabet? From the words myth or truth. Oh, a letter. Oh, I don't know what's happening. From... An R, you said. Okay. Okay. So health. Okay. The biggest health hazard in a sandstorm is suffocation. Is that myth or no myth? I'm going to say that's no myth. Okay. It's actually a myth. Oh, more likely to get your sand skin blasted off. Um, oh, okay. And another health question: the appendix has no known function in the human body. Ooh, I think that's true. Ooh, it is true. Well done, you. Well done, me. Yeah. Now pick a letter. B. From the word myth or truth? <laughs> T. T, okay. Word for a different T. World. The official colour of mourning is red in Egypt. Red sky in the morning, shepherd's warning. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. It's about weather. Um, shut up. Just going through the process. Okay. Pink sky in the morning. No, it's red sky. Pink sky. Um, true. It's a myth. Is it? Yeah, it's black. What? What? Morning. Morning is black. In Egypt. Have I slipped through some weird dimension that I'm having like a coma? Right, so you know when someone dies and you're very, very sad? Oh, morning! <laughs> you're in morning. I yeah. thought you meant morning, as in morning! <laughs> yeah, because everywhere in the world has an official colour for the start of the day. Well, I thought it was strange. <laughs> <laughs> the next, <laughs> next question is cheddar cheese is naturally orange. Myth or no myth? That is a myth, because the milk is white and it comes out and then they have to add colouring to make it orange. Correct. This is not orange, it's actually a yellowy colour. <clears throat> nice. It's like a lot of bodily fluids, when they dry, they go yellow. Uh. Pick a letter. <laughs> um, An M. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I don't know what you said. Crime. 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 Your current outfit. <laughs> it is it is a crime it is a crime people correct. are not wearing Next question. it more <laughs> correct it is a crime full stop right um, in America more women are the victims of domestic violence on Super Bowl Sunday than on any other day of the year I'm gonna go true nope it's a myth oh real I'm sure I'm, no 
I thought no. it was because... No, in the UK that happens. Oh, if, in the UK. If, if during an England match, England lose, mm. violence crime, violent crimes do increase. Mm. Not in America, where they have guns. Next question. Winston Churchill was once prosecuted for burglary. Burglary? Yes. Not backside burglary, just burglary. Didn't force his wife to take up the run. He didn't do a bit of turd burgling? No. Um, I'm not sure because he was a posh kid, wasn't he? He went to like posh schools. He was and a stuff. posh kid. Hmm? He was a posh kid, you're right. I'm going to say yeah because I think he probably stole something from somebody's tuck box or something like that when he was at Eton. Whoa. No, it's a myth. It's a myth. It's a myth. Mm. Yeah. You and you. Uh, do you want another letter? Yeah. Do you want another word? Yeah, pick a letter. Why? Because if we don't pick a letter, I can't go to do with the game. Why? Because... The letter not... Y! Oh, right, okay. That's world. Fun. During World War II... You remember that, don't you? So during World War II, the US Army kept blood donated by people of colour away from Caucasian people's blood. Is that true or false? I'm going to say true, because I know there was all the segregation mm -hmm. and stuff. I would... I'm going to say true. It is true. Mm. Arseholes. I'm so glad the world's a better place now. And the next one. Coca-Cola is so acidic, it's so acidic, that it's used by the police for cleaning up blood after traffic accidents. Lip cleaning milk? Blood. Blood. You're some sort of deranged vampire. Oh, I love a glass of milk. You mean blood, my lord. Yeah, 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 the red milk. <laughs> I know that um, if you put a tooth in a glass of Coca-Cola and leave it for a week, it'll dissolve. Okay. Not true. But I'm not sure if it will um, get rid of blood. Blood. So I'm going to go myth. So you're saying that the thing that can dissolve bone yeah. can't clean up liquid? I think it turns it into a froth. Blood froth. Okay. Um, it's not used by the police for cleaning up blood. It's a myth? It's a myth. Um, well, we'll get it right then. It did, but weirdly. Pick another letter. Uh, e. E. Crime again. Hollywood was founded by a temperance society and had no crime at all until the film companies arrived. Is that myth or no myth? I think that's true. It's true. I think I watched a documentary on it. Did you watch it? Was it a cartoon? Mm. It's alright. Okay. Um, last one. Martial arts star Bruce Lee was killed by Chinese crime bosses for refusing to work on their films. No, I think he did have a heart attack or something. I think that's a myth. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay, it was correct. It was a myth. Mm. Well done, you. Well done, you. Next one. Pick a letter. Um, H. H. Celebrity. It's your special subject. A playground fight as a child left David Bowie with no vision in his left eye. Blind in his left eye? Yeah. I know that he had different coloured eyes. Mm -hmm. Heterochromia. Um, I think that's a myth. Hey, he's dead now. We'll never know. What does it say on the card? It says it's a myth. A myth? Yeah. Mm. And Freddie Mercury was born with six toes on each foot. Well, he had he had more teeth uh -huh. than he should. No, I'm not being shady. He literally had more teeth than he should have had, like double teeth. Because he stole them from somebody, or <laughs> I'm going to say that's true. You're saying it's true. Yeah. He had six toes on each foot. Yeah. It's a myth. He had seven on each foot. Seven? He didn't. He had five on each foot, like everybody else. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, next letter. 
You. Life. Oh, life. Oh, life. The referee for the 1878 FA Cup final was named Stephen Bastard. <laughs> myth or no myth? I don't do sport, but I'm going to go with that's the truth. It is indeed true. Because they could then have the shout, who's the bastard in the black? And it's true. <gasps> You're gasping forever. <gasps> That's the worst swear I've ever said on this show. Sometimes I've said Right. And lastly, the first ever England football captain died in 1881 after a night out of drinking and dancing. Of what dancing? Drinking and dancing. I don't care. I don't give a shit one way or the other. It's true. It's true. Well, when's on you? Actually, you, you well, not do any more then. Yeah, I'm bored of it. Doing it for everybody. Take the ball and go home. Go. Stick around as next, Mike crashed a very special 18th birthday party. <laughs> Welcome back to Chewing the Cud. And now we see what Mike got up to when he found out there was an 18-year-old and free booze in Spotlight. <laughs> Sneaking into a party. Go. It's Gadiel's 18th. Not supposed to be here. I've been in the pub already. Shush. Oh, people. But so, what does Gadiel mean to you? Ah, oh, I love it. I mean, obviously, great music is played, so it's always vibing in the background, but also just the representation. I mean, it, it gets broadcast around the world on the internet and also obviously DAB and everything, but it's just to have that representation, knowing you're not like alone in not only who you are, but your music choices. I just love it. Yeah, yeah very much the same. I think it's great to be able to share your music with the LGBTQ plus community not just in the UK, but around the world. You know, it's great when those messages come in from people who are listening wherever they are, in America, in Australia, or here in the UK. I just love the power that Gadio has to reach out and support the community. Do you know what? I've, I came from Brighton uh, when all radio kind of died in that city, um, and Gadio came along in this literally like this exact same month. Uh, it took me on board as a presenter, and I worked in sales down there, and. It's always going to be a way where Gadio means a lot because it's kind of like the voice of a lot of people that I know that listen to it that don't have a station to call their own. Don't They don't have uh, things coming up on their radio stations that support their community or, you know, touch on those really heartfelt moments within our community. And Gadio just delivers every single part of that for them. And that's why it means a lot to me because I'm delivering that at the same time. So as long as I can deliver that across the board, then fantastic. I mean, mine's not as exciting as that, but... I mean, when I moved to Manchester, I mean, if someone told me when I moved that I'd find my feet in an LGBTQ plus radio station, if you told me at 18 that I was going to leave school, have a bit of in and out of work, and then land on my feet with a great job, with working for an LGBTQ plus radio station, I would have been like, nah, that doesn't exist, that's not real. And then since I've been there, it's just meant so much to me. I think building up excitement about what the community does and the exciting things that we do do, like, it, it's just a great place to be. I love it. Oh, so how long have you been with Gadio? Uh, well, actually, I started with Gadio December um, 2006. So this year is actually my 18th year being involved with Gadio. But yeah, I, uh, I wasn't there for year one, well, very first start, but was, was there for year one. Brilliant. So after all that time, what's your favorite memory been? Um, well, I, I think favorite is the wrong word. But the biggest memory I have from Gadio um, was the morning after the arena attack in Manchester. Um, usually it's Chris and Emma at breakfast. They were literally getting onto a flight from America. Um, and then I got the call, can you, can you step in? Can you do the breakfast show? Um, it was meant to be a really fun show from America, bringing like snowing or sunbathing in one of the two live and obviously like completely juxtaposed and having to do that 
the morning after the arena attack was it, it, one of the things that just stands in my sort of memory of, uh, uh, of what radio is all about and what community is all about. Obviously, a lot of the LGBTQ plus community at that concert because it was Ariana, and yeah, just coming together and bringing that to the radio. Favourite memory? Do you know what? Um, probably the best times are the ones I can't remember because there's probably been a little drink involved. Um, but I think if I had to pull something just from the top of my brain, uh, I would say that um, Pride in London, when you go to a Pride and you're working and you're going around and you're seeing everybody uh, who's having a lovely time and free to be themselves and celebrate, but also protest at the same time some of the brilliant messages that we can help bring to the airwaves, they're some of my proudest moments. Thinks that, I think, yeah, I'd say proudest moment. Yeah. Perfect. And so I found another victim. And who are you? I'm Anthony Murphy, and I have been with Gadio now for <laughs> years. Um, 17 in in your Earth terms. 17 years. 17 years, yes. I've been on since we were doing the RSLs, and I've been on Saturdays now regularly for 14 years. <laughs> I'm going to be 50 in two years' time. I was in my 30s when this started. Why does time go? It's not fair. It's going to sound remarkably cheesy. I would never do that. Um, but every Saturday afternoon is a highlight for me because I do the request show. So you get requests from literally all over the world. And you realise that I'm a Saturday afternoon request show, I'm a Saturday evening request show, a Saturday morning request show, a Saturday night request show, and there are people everywhere listening to me opening my gob and reading out what they said and you just think to yourself how am i getting away with this i absolutely love it because i literally set up a show today as we're celebrating our 18th birthday that um being able to just be my true self on air without having to think about oh is me going to mention a boyfriend or males that I might fancy like Harry Styles uh, on air going to be uh, particularly abrasive to some listeners. I don't have to filter myself other than stopping swear words going on air and sometimes that is a struggle when you have certain guests with you but um, yeah I love it. I get to turn up, I burst in the door singing every day and I've only been told off a couple of times by the big boss Ian but I blame that on you know having a lovely atmosphere where you feel like you can be yourself. <laughs> Perfect. So what's been your favourite memory? Oh, do you know what? Uh, I absolutely love Pride season, getting out, meeting some of the acts backstage and also just being in the parades, doing loads of cool stuff like that. But the one thing for me that I think was a turning point for Gadio and for my career, um, and I've worked in events previously, was taking on the leader at the Gadio Pride Awards, being able to pull something like that off with about three months notice. Crazy, but loved it. Amazing. Great night, celebrating all the great and good in the LGBTQ plus community. I'm sweating. I'm sweating. I'm so sorry. Two seconds. It's very warm. It's very warm. Hi. I'm back. <laughs> I can't believe you moved the camera then. Uh, but yeah, I love that. <laughs> you know what? Running a station like Gadio, there's so many ups and so many downs, and there's so many moments that kind of stand out. And oh god, there's so many. And you know, I think about when we did our launch party 18 years ago. We had Bonnie Tyler there. And, um, you know, we, we uh, had a drag queen that came out and everybody thought, oh, you know, we thought we were here for Bonnie Tyler and it's a drag queen. And then Bonnie came out. Um, you know, we've done the Get It Pride Awards, which is an absolute highlight. We're right there in our first year. You know, we've done some really great stuff. And, you know, all of it is about the people that we're here to serve. You know, we are really lucky to have those radio licences. We have the FM licences in Brighton and Manchester, and then we serve 13 cities across the UK. So, you know, I feel really privileged and with an amazing team that can, I guess, take advantage of that and use those licences to serve, you know, LGBTQ plus people across the UK. Perfect. So, having been there since day one, when you think there's now adults out there who have grown up with Gadio, how does that make you feel? Wow. Do you know what? I'd like to think that people have been on the journey with us. You know, as you come in here to our party, there's the, the story of Gadio. And, you know, we, we started off very much as a Manchester radio station and we've changed. And we sound really different now. We, we connect with the community differently. We work with people on a, you know, on lots of different levels. We run the Gadio Academy, which I'm so, so proud of. 200 people a year get training in radio and broadcast. So, yeah, it's, it's changed a lot, I guess, since we... Uh, Side. I was at Gaydar Radio back in the day. I, I'm that old. I know I don't look it, but I'm that old. Um, and obviously, Gaydio took over the licenses for Gaydar 
in London. So I was one of the gaydar lot that was like, don't forget me, I would love to do a show for you. And then I ended up working for the sales team at Gadio, and I think Ian will, Ian's the director of Gadio. He'll, uh, he'll detest he'll test to this. I was awful. I was so awful. They were like, do you want to buy an advertising? No, okay, bye. And, like, I was so bad at it, so bad at it. Um, so I got another job elsewhere, but I stayed on as a volunteer at Galeo. And then, yeah, I did, gosh, about three and a half years on the afternoon show. And then after that, I co-hosted The Breakfast Show with Jesse um, for about two and a half years then left three years ago to go and work for another radio station. So yeah, I've been at, I, I feel like I've done my time. I think more people get more for murder than they do volunteering at Gadio. But honestly, eight of the best years of my life. It was so much fun, really, really good. Is it a really good night to celebrate Gadio? Hmm. Mm. <laughs> no, generally, it's good. 18 yeah. years is, a, is an achievement. It is an achievement, especially in radio where, you know... Comes and goes, like that. <laughs> Just so. 18 years come to go. No, ra- but radio and <laughs> it's shows yeah, yeah. Are like here one minute, gone the next. Mm-hmm. It's all. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, with the community work that they do, of course, because it's a community station that's now expanded across the UK. Mm. So I think that's brilliant that, you know, even when other radio stations were struggling, they would come in and say, well, don't lose everything, come and work with us and expand it. I think it's a brilliant story, mm. uh, especially for the community. Yes, it is, Mike. So, how how did it all start from the beginning? From the beginning, well, a, a very good place to yeah, start. It is when you learn to read, you begin with ABC. Mm, yep. Yeah. Um, no, so Gator started off as an RSL, which is like a limited license. Mm. Okay, and they were at the top of a pub in Manchester, just doing Pride, just doing a little bit of a, a show. And then they, they basically expanded and got an actual full time license, and then just on FM. And then, you remember Gator? Mm. The Gada on the internet. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the pre grinder Gada. Yeah. yeah. Um, basically, they had a radio show with a digital license and they couldn't afford to keep it up anymore, so they expanded by taking that over. And and it gave them Brighton coverage and they've recently expanded into Leeds and Sheffield and Glasgow, so they are really now all over the UK. You know, and over 18 years is massive growth. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, and it's good that you know they give back and do things like the Gado Academy, and that they help people expand and, and grow their careers in media. Mm. Yeah. Oh, well, that's almost the end of the show, though. Remember to look for us at the Could TV on social media, and if you want to catch up with previous episodes, you can always binge us on YouTube. Just look for Chewing the Cud. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Happy, Happy birthday, Gado. Happy birthday, Gadio. Happy birthday, Gadio. Happy birthday, Gadio. Oh my God, you're 18. You can drink because you've not done that yet, have you? Happy birthday, Gadio. Happy birthday, Gadio. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you, Gadio. You're 18. Happy birthday, Gadio. I've had too many Proseccos now. Happy birthday, Gadio. Bye.